this stuff lights your fireman, the pilot lights out. This football team is coming into our place. We're standing in our way. This is a game of the heart. Focus and finish. Welcome to Monday Morning Fantasy Quarterback. This week has been a truly amazing fantasy week so far. Just check out the top 10 names on this week's standard scoring list. Nick Foles, Andre Johnson, Tom Brady, Riley Cooper, T.Y. Hilton, Chris Johnson, Zach Stacy, Case Keenum, Jericho Cotchery, Ben Roethlisberger. If you continue on down the list, you get names like Aaron Dobson and Jason Campbell. There isn't a name that's in the top 10 of fantasy scoring for the season at their position that appears on this week's list. We've got all week to talk about the standout performances and veterans who were written off for dead before this week. But today, I'd like to talk to you about those players that it's time to avoid or move on from. And hopefully, for many of these guys you have already. Now, there's no way to gain the running back situation in Carolina. It's not that they don't have any fantasy-worthy running backs there. They do. But with Jonathan Stewart now back in the mix, there's just too many ways to slice the football pie. Look at what happened yesterday. Stewart's nine carries for 43 yards. D'Angelo Williams, 13 for 42. Mike Tolbert, six for 24. And it was Tolbert, the guy with the least amount of carries, who got the vulture of the touchdown. Now, without any way to have a reasonable certainty on who's gonna get the ball, you're just playing Russian roulette here. Could it work out for you in a particular week? Sure, but there's a two in three chance that it won't. And the fact of the matter is, with Cam Newton also in the mix for goal line carries, your odds are now down to one in four. Ray Rice and his handcuffed Bernard Pierce are playing like they're handcuffed, together. Look, I don't care whose fault it is, if it's the offensive lines, if it's the running backs. In fantasy, we don't care why a player doesn't perform, we just want to avoid him if we know he's not going to. Rice had 11 carries for 17 yards yesterday, and one of them went for five yards, which means that his other 10 carries went for 12 yards. On the season, he has 97 carries for just 259 yards at 2.7 yards per carry. Bernard Pierce has the same stats virtually, 85 carries for 230 yards. That's 2.7 yards per carry too. Pierce had six carries for 11 yards and one went for seven yesterday. That means his other five carries went for four yards. Not good. I've been bitching about Trent Richardson since the day he was traded. I don't know what people see. I don't see the same thing. I don't know if it's the hair. I don't know what it is. I even made it a point to ban him from the show, refusing to ever mention his name again. But I can't take it anymore. I got into a disagreement with Scott Engel on last week's edition of This Week in Fantasy Football when I suggested that Richardson wasn't even worthy of rostering. And last night's performance has now put me over the top. I don't get it. Richardson consistently underperforms his understudy, Donald Brown. Last night, Brown had six carries for 49 yards. Richardson, eight for just 20. And he continues to be the most over-owned fantasy player in the game. 98.7% of NFL.com leagues and 100% of ESPN.com leagues. 100% everybody owns him. How? It's not the offensive line. He's had two different offensive lines. Two different offensive coordinators. Everybody's calling plays for him. Everybody's blocking for him. He can't get it done. He runs into people. He sees somebody who runs into him. And he's good at pass blocking. We don't get points for pass blocking. Running backs don't get points for pass blocking in fantasy. There are 32 other running backs that have more fantasy points than he does. Why do people insist on owning this guy? Why? Why? <laughs> Jets receivers. Any of them. Can't have them. You can't have anyone who's there now. You can't have anyone who's out when they come back. Consider the fact that the Jets' top receivers yesterday were Greg Salas, Zach Sudfeld, David Nelson, Tommy Bohannon, and Josh Cribbs. Not one of those five guys was even on the team to start the season. Kudos to the Jets' personnel department from finding guys to shoot up and contribute to winning games, but you can't possibly start any of these guys or the starters they're replacing when they come back. Because how can you assume that any of these guys will be the focus of targets? With the Patriots receiver situation in total disarray to start the season, Julian Edelman started off like a ball of PPR fire with 34 catches in his first four games. But with Tom Brady now getting his main targets back from injury, Edelman has become the odd man out with just three catches for 18 yards the past two weeks. 
Brady threw for 432 yards and four touchdowns yesterday. You would think that Edelman would have gotten some balls thrown his way by accident. Something tipped or something. Or just by osmosis. He got one catch for 11 yards. Really? Today's Twitter question comes from at Gary C, who wants to know if I think Nick Falk is a good fantasy kicker. You mean the Falk hero? Hey, he's the best fantasy player the Jets have. He's 22 for 22 in field goals, and if the Jets could score more than once in a while, he'd be up in Matt Prater territory. As it is, I think he has the fourth most kicker fantasy points. But you're going to need to look for someone else in Week 10. The Jets have a bye. Now, if you have a question you want to answer, as long as it's not about Trent Richardson, hit me up with a tweet. If I don't use your question on the program, I'll tweet you back with my best advice. And be sure to tune in to the Roto Experts Fantasy Football News Notes and Analysis segment every weekday. I'll be here to keep you current and ahead of the competition. And on weekends, come back for This Week in Fantasy Football. As I team up with the King, Scott Engel, covering the week that was, the week that will be, and answering your viewer questions. We have an NFC Norris division matchup tonight between the Bears and the Packers at Lambeau. You know, when I first saw this game on the calendar, I had my hopes set on watching one of those blizzard games by the fireplace. No such luck. Uh, it looks like 42 degrees, maybe some drizzle. Anyway, Josh McCown's not a total schlep, and he's got plenty of weapons to work with on the Bears' side of the ball. The Pack are favored by 10.5 in this one, but the over-under is set at 15.5, so there are some standout fantasy performances expected tonight. Enjoy the game, everyone. For Roto Experts, I'm Mike Cardano.